I think so. Yeah, hey I Johnny. So. Johnny, you know what I'm doing right now? Mm. Ski resort. Mm, nice. It's another day and we're on the mountain working and we're gonna paint this house today. Okay. We've got the crew, the walls are sanded, the ceilings are painted. And today's video is brought to you by Benjamin Moore. We're gonna be using bin line paint. We got some swag. Actually, we made that ourselves. If you can't tell. You can't tell. <laughs> We've actually painted a lot of houses, Jamie and I and the crew. So we're gonna tell you everything we know about painting the inside of a house Trust me, and, and paint long. colors. There, there's a lot to be known, actually. The, the more you know, you realize the less you know sometimes. Mm. That's deep, that was, that, was deep. that was deep. So we're gonna give you all the tips and tricks that we've learned to make the paint job go smoothly, quickly, and look good in the end. You after the fact. <laughs> been working out? Yeah, actually. Come on! Help me, bud. We've been working out. <laughs> that didn't work at all. And if you didn't know, Benjamin Moore is the paint color authority. They have over 3,500 colors, 3,500, which is more than any other paint company. And you can use them all on their try on feature on their app, which is pretty cool. Benjamin Moore paint goes on smoothly and doesn't splatter, which is important for us, the painters. And also it covers really well. We've used paints in the past where we had to do four or five coats of paint to get it to cover the primer, which is crazy. The bin line of paint we're using is also at a really nice price point, so we're not gonna break the bank or the budget on this paint job. Head to benjaminmore.com where you can order paint samples that will get sent directly to your house. Then you can order paint online and pick it up at your local store in three hours. What I really love about our crew is that the whole crew is willing and able to do just about any project, including cutting in paint, and they do a great job, and we have fun doing it. You can't beat that. Pro tip here about picking paint colors. The biggest mistake I've seen people make is picking a color that doesn't look the same once they get it on the whole wall as the color swatch. And a lot of times it's simply not looking at the color swatch in the same type of lighting as where it's gonna be applied. So for instance, looking at the color swatch in fluorescent lighting, it's gonna actually look different than it looks in natural lighting because what you're looking at, the color is simply uh, the color reflecting different colors of light back to your eye. So if a different colors of light are hitting it, it will change your perception of that color. Did you just make all that up? No, that's for real. Are you serious? That is for real. So look at your color swatches under several different lights, like natural and fluorescent and incandescent, and then you can make a better decision about what color it really is. Wow. I about cut you off. You just <laughs> about got a little too long with that one. What? <laughs> the zipper. Doc, somebody, somebody else wore this jacket last what are you talking time. About? I don't know what you're talking Whoever about. Whoever the last person to wear this jacket was got paint all in the zipper, and now it won't even zip oh, up at all. Man, that's a bummer. Let's do a little pro tip about edging. I'm going to be using this handy paint pail, and actually, I really love this handy oh, paint pail. Oh, that is good for you. See, look at that. You don't, need, you don't, no fingers required, <laughs> and that's good for me. Uh, all right, let's talk about edging real quick. Uh, you know, edging cutting is, in, cutting in, cutting in is the professional. Is that what it's called? Professional term. Cut in. All right, whatever. let's see how you do it. All right, I'm gonna cut it in here. I'm gonna get a little dip. I'm gonna wipe the paint okay, off. Okay, slow the... down. The dip is important. See how much okay, paint? It's dip. about a half or three quarters of an inch. Half dip. an inch. Not up to the metal. Right. I'm and gonna then wipe it off the back. Wipe off. See, so only have paint on one side. Let me see the other side. Okay. Yep. It's see that? Pretty it's, clean. Yep. And then cut. There we go. What I like to do, and I'm sure people do it different ways, but I like to put it on uh, below my cut line. See, because I got that real heavy edge. If that would have been at my cut, it would have been terrible. I would have already ruined it. And then I like to feather the brush out and just use the very point 
and let it ride just a few of those bristles up against the ceiling. It's mm -hmm. actually touching the ceiling right now. It's cut. There we go. That's a good pro tip. So you can see it's a little thin or whatever. I would I would come back in and I would I would kind of you know brush it out or whatever. But that's how you get a good straight line. You actually have to make a few of these little bristles at the very point actually touch the ceiling. Very important. If you just try to hold it just short and just try to freehand it, I don't I couldn't do a very good. I think good your job. time's up, Bub. Okay, it's over, but I think I got the point. <laughs> One more thing, I know this is a lot, bear with me. This is all important. Everybody's gotta paint their house, right? So the other mistake I've seen people make is to not take help where it's provided. Like Benjamin Moore offers booklets that are available in their stores with colors that are already matched together. They go well together. And we've had homeowners try to like reinvent the wheel and uh, put colors in rooms that are close together or trim and body color that they just pick themselves and sometimes it doesn't look very good. Not saying anything, just saying. So there is help to be had. I would use it uh, and I, that's what we've done here. Another painting pro tip. We're gonna take lunch. We don't want the brush to dry out. I don't wanna clean it because I'm just gonna start using it again. So plastic bag, just like packing a ham sandwich. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See what you got going on there. Wrap it up, it'll stay wet. You can get back to it quick. Barbecued pork skins. Dipped in French onion dip. So good. <laughs> you know they make cauliflower chips. Have you had cauliflower chips? Yeah. No, they're disgusting. <laughs> I'd rather be fat. You want to try my Health Warrior pumpkin seed bar? What were in there do you think <laughs> I didn't like? <laughs> health. A health pumpkin yeah. seed. Did that thing we ever made in? <laughs> my goodness. All right, cutting in with brushes, no blue tape on the ceiling. Then we're gonna use this special roller. This is called a power roller, I think. And it has a special head on it here. I'll show you the uh, place here where the paint comes through these little holes. Okay, and this and attaches to our paint sprayer, which is uh, pressurizing the paint. Yep, so then it goes into this special head here, which allows the paint to come through these slots. It has a gasket to keep it from spraying out the end. And then it's closed on one end and it goes to a special roller pad Oh yeah, let me here. get the inside of that. The roller pad has holes on the inside of it as well. So yeah, it saturates and fills the roller pad with paint from the inside out, and you just pull the trigger, it just however much paint you want. That's right, you just pull the trigger, it fills the roller, you just keep rolling. Endlessly. You Endless just keep rolling. going. So it, we, we like great. this for interior painting uh, walls. It really makes it faster. We turn the pressure down pretty low on the paint sprayer because if you had it like max out <laughs> pressure and you squeeze the trigger, paint will just come shooting out of this yes. thing in every direction. So it, it really doesn't take much, just a little bit of pressure to keep that paint flowing into the roller. There it is, we're ready to roll. Literally. Did you just say we're ready to roll literally? Literally. <laughs> Gosh. To even increase the speed of the power roller more, what we do is have one man using the power roller and applying the paint to the wall in a pretty even fashion, and then have another man coming behind with a regular frame and roller to smooth it out and give it its final slick down. Everything downstairs is done. I'm waiting for Ray to get off the ladder. We gotta take this spray machine upstairs. This is probably the worst part about using uh, a paint sprayer, except for cleaning it, is like getting all the hoses and everything in the bucket and the machine and dragging it up and down the stairway. Especially when there's junk in your way. We don't get make like a cordless one? A hoseless? Like a hoseless sprayer? There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. You want me to put it? I don't know. Right there. <laughs> Put it right there. I don't care. That'll work. This wasn't the spot I had in my mind. There actually is some amount of strategery involved to not, you know, scuff. Yo, get that off the pants. <laughs> to not scuff the walls that you just painted with the hose as you're going through the house and painting the rest of the house. There's no way this strategery is a word. Yeah, there, there is some amount of that going on. You just I made, don't know how much you that just made that up. <laughs> Strategery. <laughs> spell that, please. Could you spell, spell that? with an S? Man, this is always the worst part. This the tangled mess. You gotta dance around to actually do the work. You know? Yep. Um, Looking our life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Time to break out the accent color. What we're doing now is one coat and we'll come back later after all the trim is installed and caulked in and do the second coat. We'd like to do that because during the rest of the construction process, it will get scuffed a little bit. No matter what, it always gets scuffed a little. You can either do a hundred touch-ups if we try to paint it twice now. Yep. Or just save that last paint coat for, for later. That's right. So we're just gonna do one coat today, but it will get second coated on a later date. Yep. Let's talk about a few things here that's making this paint job a little easier for us and I think better looking in the end. Number one, when we're rolling, you keep the roller pretty wet. Like, yep. You know, you don't want a dry roll because then you have spots you miss. Number one rookie move, I see people trying to make the paint go too far, rolling the roller till it's flat as a yeah. pancake and won't hold any paint. And the other thing with that is you can actually not have to put as much pressure on the roller on the wall and you sort of minimize the lines on the trailing and leading edge of the roller yeah. that the roller leaves if you're not pushing on it as hard. Yeah, and it keeps it fluffed out in essence, giving it a bigger cushion. And there are some minor contours to the drywall, like near corners sometimes. You might notice there's just a little bit of a hollow spot or yeah. something. And if you mash that roller flat, it won't get into those hollow places. That's right. And, and we will note that the paint you put on with a paintbrush has a different texture than the paint you put on with the roller. So we try to roll over any paint we put on with a paintbrush with a roller so it all has the same texture in the end. Yeah, we, we brush out about three or four inches from any corner or ceiling, but then we cover that with the roller texture and try to only leave about a half inch of the brushed texture because that way you don't really see it. So I don't know if y'all heard, but I just found out the guy's building this house down the hill from us. Burger King house. Yeah, they uh, they built the foundation four feet too short in one direction. Oh! No. And they, the builder didn't even know it. It's actually the homeowner came and measured it and was like, huh, this kind of looks small. And they measured it and they're like, oh, that's because it's four, four feet too short. Yeah, that's why we don't sub stuff out and we can do it ourselves. That's right. That's the exact reason. That's a good reason. Stuff like that happens a lot. Hey, great job guys. Good day. It's been a great day on the mountain. We got the whole inside of the house painted actually. Cut in, painted, done. One coat. We'll do the second coat later. Thanks for building with us. Actually, thanks for painting with us today. We'll see you next time. See ya. Your garage. Hey, and if you don't have a, a headlamp, you know. You, you always got Christmas these. lights. <laughs> just make it work. That's, that's a good look for you. Thank you. You go in the little closet and shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you need to the closet.